All right, well, welcome to Three Kings Loot uh, first unboxing event and video. Uh, we have here Anthony Barberi, Sam Carrier, and Craig Watsonville, and our special guest, Martin Angola from Fun Times Productions. Hey, folks. All right, so uh, for our first look, what do you think, uh, do you think of this? Are you thing? excited about this edition or what? I'm excited to crack it. Oh, yeah, it looks amazing, actually. Yeah. I mean, fingers are going like that right now because I have got the got the wings. I have back waiting. I got a Jason the Mind Sculptor waiting to be opened and that You're going to get box. one of those weird boxes every pack is for so well. Oh, <laughs> well, I won't mind. <laughs> I think that people have been very, very excited since this news has been dropped. I, we, I think we can qualify this 8-bomb Eternal Masters reprint of a lot of people that people have been seeking long, far and wide to get their hands yeah. on and to play and finalize their legacy decks. Finally, Anthony, is there a card that you are looking for? In this set? set. Um, honestly, I think the, the card that I'm looking for in this set is a foil Sensei's Divining Top. Because I always loved Sensei's Divining Top when it when it came out originally and I played it a lot and then I ended up getting out of Magic and coming back and I lost my set and whatever. And now, like, I mean, Jace is great, uh, Force is great, all that kind of stuff. I think it's just Sensei's Divining Top because I love playing combo, I love going like, oh, you know what, counterbalance, no. <laughs> and there's a bit of romance in there, right? Yeah, like course. it brings you back to good times. No, you got to with that card. It's like, oh, I'm gonna just top deck my card to win now. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, so I found that pretty annoying at the time in Kemiga, where like yeah. I almost stopped playing because of that card. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, uh, for me, it's actually a single foil that I'm looking for. Uh, I've been playing this card as uh, my second deck. I'm a huge uh, mid-range attrition guy. Uh, I always played Thoughtseize in my deck, and my favorite Planeswalker is Liliana of the Veil, so uh, it, it reached me out for uh, uh, the style of play and uh, see what's going to be the art, and pretty much excited well, about it. I can tell you that I know at least one guy who owns LGS that is not happy to see Sinkhole in that set. Yeah, <laughs> He has been complaining about seeing that card, and I'm not, because the card is so great. The art is awesome. And land devastation in black, like where do you find it? Let's say you don't find it much except sinkhole. Greg, what are you excited about? I'm excited about the foils actually, not one card, just all these foils finally. Four don't so you well think foils. It's strange that they're not priced yet, that we don't have a pricing on those foils. We don't we cannot guess exactly how much they're going to be worth. We're no we yeah. know it's going to be I worth know, a um, lot. I know some owners of Jace the Mind Sculptor uh, uh, foils that are going to be crying. <laughs> I'm one. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, Force of Wills foil, Mana Crypt foil, these are just... And not only that, that I've seen. Uh, we also myself. have the, the Commander foils that are really good in this set. Yeah. We've been looking for these so, for so long and it yeah. wasn't present at all. You only have the, the foil ones, promo, that you can get even of some. So Makes uh, a lot of collectors happy. Yeah. As for myself, Caracas, of course, is the one I want to open, but any Squadron Ox coming my way, I'll be very happy. Because people, since you don't know me, I'm this absolute nut, <coughs> nut about Popper. This format is so good, and Squadron Ox is one of the nicest reprint we Popper player could get in that set. <coughs> what? Let's pass on <coughs> some of these boxes. Yes, uh, Greg, since you are our financial guy, you. I think that you should talk a, a bit about the Canadian versus U.S. Uh, for the Eternal Masters. Well, yeah, it's, it's, this is change. the Canadian edition of uh, the unboxing. Um, the American uh, MSRP is at ten dollars per pack, making a box about two hundred forty dollars MSRP. Unfortunately for us Canadians, though, that means it's a lot more than that. Uh, it's about thirteen dollars a pack. Uh, the exchange rate goes anywhere between 1.25 to 1.35, de depending on what you're using. Uh, the credit cards and banks are going to gouge you. And so these boxes, uh, for instance, cost us the 1.35 range of exchange rate. So that's about a 10% uh, increase over the actual exchange rate. Uh, but the Canadian dollar is always plunging, going down, ups and down like a roller coaster. So. I figure instead of keeping my Canadian dollars, I might as well invest in something that will go up. So we each got a box, uh, you know, uh, the 
Canadian dollar is very attractive and colorful, but it doesn't gain any value. And these cards will. Um, so Are we're it? looking about at 325, we said, Anthony, uh, MSRP. Money. Yeah. 325 or 340? For, it's 340. Like, we're like in the 330 something and change. Mm -hmm. But if it's 1.25, yeah. we're 300. Yeah. And then if it's 1.35, were 325 MSRP. Yeah. Add the taxes on that, which is another thing about us Canadians. Oh, wait, did I mention Quebec? I also have to say uh, for the French law that we have to say the name of our store in French, so it's Butin des Trois Rois. At bon least bon once. Bon bonjour. Bonjour à tous, live from Montreal. Salut. And uh, we'll be dubbing this in French uh, sometime uh, within the year. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, it's it's definitely up there in uh, cost for us Canadians. <clears throat> but uh, I want to stress out this. Those cards are very valuable. And this set is really highly quoted right now by Forbes. <coughs> Forbes Magazine has been running a column on magic investment for the last five years. Uh, they uh, make a rate of investment on any set telling you if it's a buy, if it's not, if it's a keeper, if, if it's not, and this and that. Eternal Masters have been very highly rated by Forbes because they uh, evaluate that the staples in there are worth a lot over time, not in the present market because, of course, right now the market will be fluctuating because those cards are coming on the market, so some of those cards the value will drop, yeah. of course, in the first few weeks. People do not panic. Those are blue chips. Those are staples. Mm -hmm. They will, as soon as people get their hands on them, they're not going to be enough of those good cards to fill the demand. Oh, so yeah. the price For are sure. going to go up again and again and again. Personal advice, buy those boxes. Don't remove the wrappers on them, sit on them for at least a year, and then you're going to end up to be a very happy camper. Otherwise, you need to build up your uh, legacy inventory, you want to get into the Eternal format, please crack those pack opens, be lucky with them, you're going to get, no matter what, enough cards to start building a, a decent shell. Sure. It's a good place to it's, start. Yeah, It's not a good idea to invest in these if you want to make a quick buck. No, it's no. definitely a failure, but uh, I say I think it's going to go up in value immediately once. Uh, we can we just confirm seeing. what Martin said. Basically, just buy the two previous Modern Master. Uh, we saw that all the spike value of those wares ended up being still staples and right now in the format of Modern. And therefore, that made the value jump up, such as the, the great example that we had recently was Blood Moon, which went to $50, $60. Uh, so uh, the uh, value in this of all these mythics are really worthy uh, and uh, will be quite appreciated in even six months, eight, in a year. Well, so. there's four Chase mythics, right? Yeah. At least uh, Jay's, Manfred, Chase, Caracas, Caracas uh, Force of Will. Will. Force of Will. Yeah. And all those, if you get one of these as a foil, your box is oh, you your know, box well paid, is for. paid <laughs> for. And the chances are, since there's four, I mean, we're not just chasing a Tarmogoyf. We're chasing yeah. four cards, and and some added value in the rares. You mentioned the sen Sensei's Divine Top. top. There, that's the oddball here. The foils, we don't know. There's one foil per pack. I can't wait to see what we get out of each the of these boxes. The foils add too much variance to really like get yeah. that value like as you know stacked okay. evenly. Uh, the draft format, uh, guys. We were. Uh, uh, this is a so draftable I think we're set. going to talk about the draft when we're going to open the, the okay. actual pack so that we see the, we, we see the cards when we're talking about them. One thing I want to talk about is the growth of Eternal Format. Since Sam mentioned uh, the Modern Master Edition, um, if you look at the statistics, <coughs> if we're going back th uh, three years, uh, Magic the Gathering had a community of four million players worldwide. Yeah. Since the uh, prints of the Eternal formats, so Eternal Master, Modern Master, and so on, we have moved on to a 20 million player uh, community. Wow. Uh, this proves the interest of the Eternal formats. Look at MTGO, you will see the leagues that have been created. Look at the activities in the league. A modern league has five to eight hundred players. A mere popper league friendly has eight hundred players in it. Yeah. Standard competitive leagues have over a thousand players in them. 
uh, people are getting into those formats. Even, uh, of course, modern as 800 plus, legacy now gets player, vintage gets player. Uh, I think that the idea of printing those boxes actually revived the whole magic concept. Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. new life into it. Exactly. And for the younger players that didn't get to play with those cards, we had incredible fun killing our opponents with stupid, <laughs> but stupid effects yeah, yeah. coming out of nowhere. And those cards had a very sentimental value to all those old school players out there that sure. still want to do sure. it again and again yeah. and again. Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, any recommendations, guys, for the set? Like you, Greg. You I buy personal. It. You buy personal Eternal Master. What do you do with it? You buy a box of Eternal Master. What do you do with it? Well, I'll get into Legacy, see what the uh, what cards I can make a deck with, and then if I, for instance, if I get a Force of Will, though, I'm gonna want to get three more. So right there, that's gonna raise the cost and yeah. the sales on the Force of Will. Um, I would get my my staples, my Legacy staples. So Force of Will. So, so I'd say. So you you crack this thing open and you build. Yeah, and I'm go buying singles after that to see what what I'm missing. Uh, I play Commander as them. well with as Legacy, so right there you got your Commander staples and your Legacy staples, and they can work in both decks. I mean, there's no reason why your yeah. your same card can't be played in two decks at once. Nice. Swap it in and out. Swap it in and out. You know, so unless you I have the money to just go split. Yeah, let's just get one of everything. <laughs> but I mean, being conservative, uh, where you are buying very expensive cards that are going to gain in value, and you get to play with them, it's an investment in fun and in the future when you want to get out you're guaranteed to get some money back it's a nice small deposit small payment on something right <laughs> i mean so if it's I better than a car right where you're going to just depreciate if i get your strategy right then i buy this thing i crack this thing open as fast as i can i figure out which deck i can build with what i open and then i run to my lgs and buy the cards that i need because they have dropped in value before they exactly. spy out again Yes. And they'll be going up quite soon again because yes. everybody's going to be doing the same thing. Yes. So I remember that with Modern Master 1, the cards started coming back up two weeks after the set yeah. was, that's right. <coughs> was out. I mean, people, two weeks, that's such a so short span because yes. lots of cards had been released on the market and they still spiked up two weeks after. This is why this set has value. Yes. Yeah. You don't want one Force of Will, you want four. Of and nobody course. wants one of, of different different types of Force of Will. They want to have the same one. The same art, same so there thing. you go. And if you want to get them foil and your foil uh, legacy deck, this is your chance because they're real the real foils. They're not your judge promo foils. They're not your different bits. What All do you right. think, Sam? Uh, me, uh, I'm a little bit two-sided here. Basically, what I would do is get a box, keep it sealed, uh, sell it after a year or two, but at the same time, I would definitely jump and get my play set of cards that I want to go if I want to go in Legacy. Uh, of course, we mentioned Force of Will, there's uh, Wasteland, there's uh, GTMS, the classic, James the Mind Sculptor. And uh, even Caracas in Legacy is a, a huge gem here. Uh, my point is why I'm saying this. Uh, well, I did the same thing basically with First Modern Master. I grabbed the. Uh, I was uh, getting back into modern and I got my place out of Tarmogoy for uh, around 120, 140. Now they were 200, 220. So you can see the markup, but also what's worth, uh, worthwhile and what not. It's just to evaluate as yourself what words it for you. So uh, that would be my two cents. Um, what am I going to do with this box? Honestly, I'm, I, I'm a huge limited player. I want to do seals. I want to do a draft. I want to see what's going to go on. And, and we're going to open it. We're going to, you know, we're going to see what we what we get now. We're going to analyze it at the same time, and then it's going to help me when we do our drafts. Since we're going to be have events and stuff like that, it's giving me that little edge. I've actually held the cards. I've actually seen what they can do. I've seen the spread. So that makes me excited opening this box, and I'm going to have that little one up on everybody, so I can even win even more packs and just keep going and keep going. Isn't he the typical magical player looking for any kind of edge he can get? <laughs> oh, what's up? Until they watch your video and then they'll yeah. have the same edge. Well, oh. there you go. <laughs> so make sure to share the video. I think that we have bored people enough with commentaries. Those packs are lined up. I think we should start cracking. You can't wait. Ooh.
Yeah, so let's start right. crashing and uh, we're gonna get you guys a better view of this. Alright. So I'm gonna do a draft pick, open my first pack, pick the goblin, let's see what's going on in here. Okay. Now they're easy to open with the little slit at the bottom. Alright, so Dead Bird Shaman, Borderland Marauder, Rally the Peasants, Prowling Pangolin, Gaseous Form, Thornwell Archer, Glacial Wall, Sentinel Spider, Swiftwater Cliffs, Counter Spell, Tooth and Claw, Pyroblast, Phyrexian Gargantua, Goblin Charbelcher. What are the odds with the pack? I get the actual card. Wake of Vultures and a Dragon Token. So I'm going to lay it out for all of you to see. Uh, let's keep it with the proper colors. Woo Burger. All right. So, Counter Spell, Thornwood Archer, Glacial Wall, Sentinel Spider, Swift, and we got another blue card, Counter, Tooth and Claw, hmm, interesting. Again, nothing super bombastic because the Char Belcher can't really be played in this draft format. Uh, if you need a go, if you want to get the money card, you'd probably go for the Goblin Char Belcher, but uh, it's not going to go far in this draft. Um, so, the greedy pick, I guess that's the one, like I said, Goblin Char Belcher. Uh, I don't really see anything else. The foil is a good old vulture, so it's a nice flyer. I guess uh, blue black. We got some blue black here, dead bridge shaman, so we could do elves. Uh, elves, we got elves here. Green black, it's a nice archetype. Um, definitely reach and death touch. Very good, uh, very good card for two. And uh, rally the peasants. I mean, if you're going all out, uh, maybe white and green. Yeah, my pick one would be, in this case, well, it's not the best, and it's a hard format to play. So this one gives you card advantage, but it's really expensive, the, the Gargantua. And Prowling Pangolin, which you got, and you gotta sacrifice a creature and comes out. So if you're doing some graveyard trick trickery, got the black right here I would go with elves I mean counter spell is a nice one too though I always like a two blue counter spell and I miss it I haven't played those in a long time so my pick just for fun would be either counter spell or thornwood archer the archetypes aren't really defined yet uh, we're having a hard time anyways here defining all the archetypes blue green elves white green enchantments mono black not much anything for mono black. Um, yeah, that's it. Blue black. Got my counter spell here. Maybe blue white. There are some wall of omens, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Yeah, so blue white. I got my counter spell to start off with. Maybe get a wall later. Again, like I said, the goblin char voucher. It's good money pick. But uh, if you're going to back draft, wait for later. You'll probably get it later. Personally, what would you pick, Martin? Personally, Pyroblast, like, I like to keep uh, early, I like to keep open in red, and I would hope, actually, to see some counter spells or other cards, because uh, my plan would be to move into red-blue at this point. Uh, I feel that blue is going to be underdrafted instead, because it doesn't look as powerful as other colors, but actually, in the <coughs> red-blue, uh, there's always some fun to be had. So I would probably go down that way, and Fire, Fire Blast is a cheap spell, it can be easily splashed if I'm, I don't end up playing Major League where Red. So counter burn? <clears throat> if you want. Yeah, Red Blue. You got here. Perfect. What about you, Sam? What do you say? Uh, here, I would actually have uh, three choices. Uh, my first one is I love uh, good ratio and good power, also effectiveness. I'm uh, a lot about the um, Elf Dread 2-1 uh, Reach that Touch. That would be my first pick. I'm uh, wishing to wield a spider because it's actually a really mm -hmm. strong uh, body 
in this format as well. There's not a lot of big stuff. And uh, it also keeps me open for the possibility of uh, even wheeling the black a little bit. Um, that, that would be my choice here. What about you, Anthony? Um, I'm on the fence with two cards here. I, I love the Thornwald Archer. Elves is a really great thing. I like playing combo elves, so you know I've got a little affinity for that. But I also love the Pyroblast, like Martin was talking about. Um, I have a hard decision between both. Pyroblast is super splashable for one red. But Thornwald Archer is like, oh, do I have no flying? And this like my only answer to other things that might be flying over. Like Death Touch immediately just you know, wrecks everything that flies over you. So I'm stuck in between those two. Honestly, it's a coin flip for me. I'm really surprised by you two picking Power Blasts here. Just for the fact that it's only on the blue permanent or on the blue spell. That makes it really specific. As so, a first pick, I'm surprised. Yeah. <clears throat> I think with this will wheel, but... I'm not sure. Can't be 100%. Uh, no. It's okay. just because I, I am really afraid of people going blue in that set. There is enough to actually stop your limited bombs and then you end up... Yeah, blue. like you were saying, sure. if, if, if blue is underdrafted and one guy just drafts all the blue and he has, ends up like six counter spells, mm -hmm. yo, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> yeah, but this card is only specific versus blue, so you're basically yeah. getting your first it's pick into deck. One, one deck. Yeah. I, Personally, and I agree with Sam, as a first pick, yep, would be uh, your, not, yeah. not not the best first pick. But that's just my opinion, and we're all going into yep. this differently. All right, well, next pack. So, what do we have here? I'm not going to show you yet, guys, because I want to see first. Ooh. And we have Scream Torture, Edit Vanguard, <laughs> Night Whisper. Bugwar Walshow, an old favorite of mine, The Wayfinder, <coughs> Memory Lapse, another Cliff, Counterspell again, who was talking about six Counterspells, <coughs> Phoenix and Rager, Wear a Bear, <coughs> Seeding Wind, now that is an interesting card, <coughs> Centaur Chieftain, Torment of Souls. Balance, that is mean, and Night Whisper Foil, plus the Elemental Token. This is a hard pack, um, <laughs> really hard right, pack. Yeah. Balance, balance, balance is such a nice card. In that format, limited, it can wreck. Uh, also, there is uh, actually so many things. Um, since my previous pack was uh, opening a fire blast that I would have picked, I would probably go balance or any of those cards because I like them, but uh, I would probably go with the, <coughs> the Marshall or the Torment of Soul first, but balance would be my ultimate pick in this. Greg, what would you pick? Definitely balance. I'll go white, black, blue. but. Uh, also, the Civic Wayfinder is not a bad one, but I would not go first pick with. And, well, Night Whisper is another nice one. Very nice, actually. Uh, maybe Blue Black Control with a counter spell coming back, hopefully. Or another one coming in another pack. The Holden, that's uh, always pressed. Yeah, I got Phyrex and Rager, Rager and Night Whisper that I'd be looking at. And you get it twice, so chances are it might wheel. It does, you know, black is more open. But definitely balance as my greedy pick and my first pick, just I will go in white. So uh, as a first back, back one, pick one, I would go with balance obviously as well. Um, such a great effective removal, discard effect, and uh, disruptive of mana too, which as you know I like. Um, there is also, um, if it would be my second pick after, uh, as we said, uh, I was picking uh, the green guy, Reach the Touch, uh, for two mana. Um, I would actually go for Civic Wayfinder here. Uh, why? Because this format is all about being able to splash a bomb into your deck. And Civic Wayfinder is really the guy to do that job. He's giving me the color I need to splash a different card. So uh, that would be my pick. And you stick on it in green. 
at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, balance, like everyone else said, is just too good of a thing to, to pass up on pack one, pick one. So definitely that's the greedy pick and the, I think my proper pick if this was a pack one. But uh, if this is pack two and I pick either the Pyro, if I pick the Pyroblast pick one, definitely taking the Mog War Marshal. Love that card. An extra body is amazing to have. And if I'd pick the uh, Thornwald uh, Archer, I would definitely take the Civic Wayfinder. Hi, uh, we're on pack three. This is Samuel. And uh, I have a little pack with the Dead Right Shaman on it. I really like the card. Sadly, can't play it anymore. All right, so we got Plague Witch, Dragon Egg, Benevolent Carrion Feeder, uh, Benevolent Bodyguard, Carrion Feeder, Glacial Wall, Sylvan Mind, Uno's Grace, another counter spell. Of course, you'll find plenty, it's a common. Uh, Phoenix and Rager, Werebear, the old classic, Threshold type, Tooth and Claw, Wall of Woman, Cabal Therapy, Serum Demetrit, and Ash Not Altar Foil, which is really good actually for Commander guys. Um, so, um, here, pretty interesting, um, Serendim Ifrit as a pack one pick one is an instant pick, it's a flying bomb, blue will be low picked as we said, and uh, an amazing card flying. Um, as for me, if I would go in the sense of my deck that I was uh, picking, um, if you remember I picked the, uh, uh, the Archer and then the Civic Wayfinder. Um, I already know that Green Black is a strong archetype here, uh, so I'm going with an old friend of mine that works a lot also, Cabal Therapy. Uh, so strong when you know the hand, first you'll have to try out, yes, because we don't know what the other guy has, but then sacrificing flashback with like a token elf could be really <laughs> astonishing. Um, as for if I go for the money pick, it's definitely the Ashnod Altar foil here because uh, this card is uh, one of the master combo cards of Commander. So um, that would be my two cents here. Um, what would be your pick, Martin? Oh, this is a hard one, but considering my first picks and considering that I've picked Balance as a second pick, I would go with Wall of Omen. I've always liked the wall. Uh, it does provide a good blocking body. The effect is, of course, non-neglectable. Uh, but there is also a strong temptation for the Ifrit. Like, the Ifrit is <laughs> really nice. I've seen two Gunserve spells so far. I might wheel one back at least. As I start uh, picking blue, I might be goddamn annoying. <clears throat> Greg? Well, as my first pick, pack one first pick, I would do Saren of Ifrit, uh, definitely. Uh, not just because it's the rare, but because it's so strong. Uh, three and uh, already on my first pack that I opened, uh, counterbalance was my pick as well. So, could if that was my third pack, uh, definitely uh, Sarah Demifrit, right? I'm going in blue. Um, other than that, I uh, I like the black, the Cabo therapy as well. Very nice. Uh, I would go with the elves. If earlier I picked the elves, I would go with the Cabo therapy. Uh, what about you, Anthony? Oh man, I'm stuck between like four cards here. I mean, I love the Cabal Therapy. It's like like Sam said, it was just, it's just amazing. The Serendib Afrit, like super powerful. I mean, pack one, pick one is a definite pick. Wall of Omens, if I'm in pack two or three, whatever, if I pick that balance. And then the Astronauts Altar just for money value. And even at that, I mean, there's some, there's some um, uh, uh, ramping that you can use in here early game would be really great, especially off of a token or something like that. It just goes nuts. Wall of Omens uh, hasn't been mentioned, but it's a really good... Uh, I've picked it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the balance, of course. Yeah. yeah. With the balance, of course. Of course. So, moving on to the next pack. All right, so, Anthony. All right. Last, but certainly not least. All right, what do we got here? What do we... Oh, it's cut off stuff here. That's interesting. <laughs> All right, so we've got Orberg Uprising, uh, Sting Scour, Scout Scourger, bleh, Second Thoughts, Skulking Ghost, Sylvan Might, Warden of Avos Isle, Phyrexian Rager, Werebear, Thornwood Falls, Manowar, 
Calciderm, Hydroblast, Sengir Aristocrat, a Nivenral's Disc, and a Memory Lapse, as well as a Wall Token. Oh god. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Greedy pick obviously the Nivenral's Disc. I love that. It's, uh, some great removal, just kills all the things, including enchantments, like there's Necropotents in here, so you gotta be careful of that. Uh, as well as any enchantment uh, deck that's running around, white green enchantment, so just bleh. Uh, other than that, I mean, if I'm already in blue, I'm grabbing Mana War or Hydro Blast, depending on what else I've seen. I mean, a Flying Geist, there's just so many good picks in this pack. I don't know. But yeah, no, I'm definitely going with uh, either Niv Disc or Mana War for sure. What about you, Malfi? Oh, well, with, with the pick of Balance, of course, Calcedern, Right Snap. Like that would go so well in my white deck. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, blue is uh, really strange. It seems to uh, that the packs we opened, there were a lot of good cards. I would uh, be tempted to move into blue, but I would go Calcedon because that solidifies my white. Uh, for me, pack one, pick one of everything would be Niven Nivenrel Disc, a classic removal that managed even artifacts and enchantments. Uh, what can we ask more than that? Then in a format that you can play even the Honden uh, archetype. Um, my pick following my deck when I just picked also Cabal Therapy. I mean, I'm just looking for feeders and Sangir Autocrat is right away my pick here. Uh, I get board value with this, uh, having all these tokens. Plus I can flash back Cabal Therapy, uh, sign me up. Um, so that would be my pick. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, greedy pick going with the Nevro's disc. Uh, even maybe just control flavor and, and wiping the board is great. I'm uh, I'm looking at Mana War though uh, as a blue blue pick. Uh, of course, the Hydro Blast uh, continue with the Pyro Blast if you're going counter burn. But I I would prefer uh, Temple Mana War right there. Um, I did pick at the beginning. I went for Elves. And looking at this pack, going green, black, elves, I would go with the greedy uh, Stangir Aristocrat that costs four, no higher than, than your curve, but you're getting some bodies onto the field. And if you're going to do like some kind of uh, overgrown uh, um, attack, well, Stangir Aristocrat is going to help you out with that. That's pretty much it. I mean, there, there's good, good, this is a good mono black pack. Yeah. Yeah, really quite. good mono black pack, so. And that's the second uh, rager that we've seen in three packs. Right? There's this many wheelings for yeah. each of the decks at the moment. Right yeah. now, yeah, the Werebear and Phyrexian Rager so, has just been around been everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Werebear is a good one too, by the way, for the uh, ramping uh, green something, green X. Yeah, and if it reached threshold, it's one, way more than a one-one uh, dork. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and it will, it will if. Uh, it's a good mid-range pick in draft, uh, yeah. my six, seven pick. So I think, guys, that we're going to unbox the rest massively this and nice. show you what we're getting. Card yeah. advantage with uh, removal. Here's my pick right there, guys. <laughs> awesome. Second. All right, so let's move on to open these boxes. Ready to go? Ready to go. Right. Let's get our box open, guys. Some value. Let's see what we can get. Go, go, go. Ooh, vindicate. Oh, Shiver Wash. Foil. Man of War. Oh, wow. Van Break Tour. Nice. There we go. Nice. There we go. That's money. Jareth Luna and Titan. Luna and Titan is more a uh, commander. Not much uh, there. Ah, starting on class. It's all good. Is sorting our things right away, so that's that's a lot easier to go through later. Yes, yes well. those card sorters are so overworked. We think. Oh, Rancor's reprinted this, and I totally forgot about that. There's also the ramp up that we see. Uh, Brainstorm now being an uncommon. Um, Vampiric Tutor being a mythic. Uh, still really amazing that we have the, the chance to have these reprinted. So this is a real weird cut, you're right? Yeah, yeah, I know. On the back end, this, the cuts uh, are strange. This cut is kind of uh, kind of strange. 
Goblin Soldier with a Green Sun Zenith. That's a nice pack over here. Land or Elf Foil, because you know, you got a Foil or Elf deck. Oh yeah. Our friend's favorite Squadron Hawk right here. Ooh, a classic. <coughs> Land or Elves Foil. Nice. Always like Sick. that. So what does the person with uh, the most valuable box get? You get to keep the box. <laughs> I see how you work here. The Enchantress. I just really hope that like at least one of us pulls one of, uh, like a foil chasing thing just for like at least one. How about four of us? Green Sun Zenith again, but foil. Nice. Really green sun zenith? That's a fun one. Right there, if I would have first picked green sun zenith, I would get another <laughs> green sun zenith in my deck. That would just be too good. Too good. And with the Sylvan Library, green sun zenith with the green. Sun I like zenith. the new art on the Blood Raid Elf. That's some yes. good art you got right yes. here. Yeah, that's a nice pack right here. Definitely uh, oh, paying for itself. So many memories with Brawn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to do the token deck uh, that I rubbed the board. I always like those cards, that. you know, brown, brow bead, that type of thing. Oh, so my first baby, a wasteland. Nice. Wasteland, nice. Okay. Definitely want to cover those guys. So I. Gotta do something, because you open a wasteland. Uh-huh. Yeah, we gotta Versus catch up now. Yeah. We gotta catch Ooh, up. Ooh, how about Tidal Wave Foil? Oh, cool. Good, 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 Oh, and a disc. All right, here I come. Oh, a disc um, and a Mistress Factory. Oh, sick. Uh, that's a, that'd be awesome in sealed. A, yeah. <laughs> that'd be amazing yeah. in sealed. Yeah. So I want that in my seal pool to Sunday because uh, people were organizing a seal pool on on Sunday. Uh, Greg, what is the event exactly? I think on it's Sunday a we got a Grand Prix trial for Indianapolis, and it's uh, six packs for eighty bucks pre-sale tax in or ninety dollars at the door. You get six packs when you come in for your seal pool. And then ten dollar credit per participant will be added to the prize pool. And if we make a top, if we get 32 players or more, our top eight will be an Eternal Master Draft. Or else, just uh, we're gonna use our seal pool for the top eight. I'll be there. I'll be it's there. It's gonna be sure. fun. Of course, for seal. release, we're having a draft as well. Anybody can bring their three packs of Eternal Masters and pay five bucks to get in. It's the five dollars going to oh, be the Oh, they changed the art on Deep Analysis. Yes, yes, I just opened it at the same time. Control <laughs> magic. Yeah, that's and underwhelming. With an anime dead though, my Do you first like it? eight. Flink and Zilla, the art. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's it's more old magic. More relics yeah, is always like, good. Yeah, the, it is a strange look because yeah. the art looks kind of old school, but the finish really looks modern. Yeah. At the same time. Oh yeah. Like that's an art I would definitely like see on some like pre two thousand. Yeah, stuff like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely like uh, pre Meradens, like. Yeah. I thought they would do an archetype with blood artists when I saw it up in the. Yeah, it's still playable. Ooh, I mean, they, they didn't put so many oh, 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 look at this baby, guys. This is nice. nice. Sleep that baby. Don't, Don't put it down. Through. You sleep it. <laughs> there you go. Sick river. Once you want an LGS, you don't stop sleeping. <laughs> I never stop sleeping. Dual Caster Mage reprint is an interesting one. It's only available in Commander. Uh, Commander 2015, the Planeswalker, the Red yep. Card, Ducati, isn't that right? It so it's not Commander 2015, it's 2014, sorry, where you have the Planeswalkers. So there are some reprints of uh, cards that you could only get in, in special sets, including Commanders and Reconstructed decks. There's his druid. I love them elves. 
else in this set are good. Like, if you want to draft something safe, you do have good chances of elves. The problem Where is everybody's going to go for it. Yeah. Where are your foils, Mike? Foils are right here. Nice. I opened an old classic of one of my old prison decks, Braids Cabal Minion. Mm. Love to play this card so much. So finishing though. Yeah. <laughs> I know oh, that. Oh yeah. Alright. It's going down. Let's get that bomb. Yeah, we need those bombs. We're them bombs. Diminishing returns. Alright. Oh yes, my ultimate favorite sneak attack! Sick! Nice! Oh, that is, that's your favorite. Well, I got another of my runes and a foil tower. I had so much fun playing sneak attack with Rorix. Chain Lightning is a nice reprint. Oh yes. For the Red is that reprint an uncommon or rare? Uncommon. Uncommon. Sick. Very so cool. sick would have been reprint as common. Common, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we can play it in popper anyway. No, of course, I mean that's, that so. opens up a lot more Ooh. for popper players. Thanks, Gorger. Foil. Well, I mean, red deck wins is always a good oh, chase yeah. to card. People, do you like Drago? It's okay. Oh yeah. Pretty Drago, good. the commander tricks. They do all yeah. the finish with that. For all those <laughs> commander people. Yeah. Jared Still here. Still cracked the mythic yet. Hold on guys, you leave me in the dust. No, I didn't get a mythic yet. Oh no, okay. Good. You got Watch one of the balance over there, though. Wow, that was though. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's still part of the same box. Oh, yeah. yes. It's uh, counted. Um, nothing special, though. Karmic Guide. There we go. Trigon Predator. Oh, reprinted so as Uncommon, so it was already a Modern Master reprint, though. Yeah. So he's already gone down. And gear auto crash. Harmonize Uncommon is another well weighted card. I mean, it's uh, played in a lot of Commander Green decks. That's what. It... Oh, so uh, Yevmeya yeah, yeah, and Chintress Foil. It's always cool. Huh. But not the uh, Argothian um, one? <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe. Don't forget. Well, at least opening these cards will give me a good idea on what I can start doing. I mean, looking at a set online is very different from actually having the cards in front of you. I feel like just opening these up helps me a lot better. Uh, yeah, is there another dreadful? Question. One of another favorite of blacks. Giant soul huge. It is quite easier Boy. when you actually have the paper card in front of yeah. you to figure out where, which way you want to go and to evaluate pacifism. the set. Gotta love pacifism. Always. Gotta love Rancor too. Yeah, Rancor is so good. good. Man, so many elves. Yes. Such elves. Oh, the elves yeah, are the real. Enchantress so good. Again. I'm definitely doing that at the draft. Yeah. <laughs> you and most everybody of the else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Siege Gang Commander. Hello, you. Nice. Oh, it has the it has the elves versus goblin art. Yeah. Yeah. Not as nice. No, I, I prefer the old one. Yeah, like the good old one. Yeah. I think everybody does. Oh, oh here he is. anime dead. That's fun. That's really good. Cool. That's fun. And yeah, so the furious perfect. And a wildfire emissary. Mythical, mystical shooter. Yep. One of these reprints. Up rampant as well. Swords to plowshare. Finally got my swords to plowshare on common. Uh, in Doom. Fast. In Doom, nice. Very good. I just, I just look at the back of the pack now. Like, 
As, as much as it's cool to see some of these cards, like I really want to hit up that mythic like right away. I'm super excited for it. I want to get so that about, average two. It's about three per box. So three average. per box. Yeah. One. <laughs> so I've opened also one of the the classic underdog of goblins, Goblin Trenches here. Uh, this card is has been always on the back door for me, and when I was playing uh, uh, Legacy and Vintage at the time, because uh, I was thinking I could go and uh, do combos with such. Uh, and you really don't matter about your lands in a Goblin deck, so uh, really good for that. Squadron Hawk, there we go. You'd be happy. All the Hawks. I want them all. They're like Pokemons. Go catch them all. Yeah. What's wrong if they have a giant box at home? It's just like this well, big. Well, it, it will be a <laughs> flood. <full. laughs> well, he was bragging about a Braggle. I got a Braggle foil right here. <laughs> Sweet wasteland. Yeah. Thank you. Out of, out of all of us, we open two we'll wastelands. It. And a Mistress Factory is in back. Yeah. The lands are good. Are very good. Gotta show perfectness to our customers. We haven't seen a force of will yet. Yeah, it's true. No force of will yet. Or Jays. Or Jays. Finally, our Goshen Enchantress. I love my name. No, now I'm the only one who hasn't physically opened one yet. It's coming, I'll tell you. It's gonna be Foil Jays. Bring back to those World Wake days. <laughs> Red Arties. And it was with the Regal Force, a uh, classic combo card with elves as well, uh, with werewolves, werebear, and everything. Would totally be uh, one of the, the picks to fill in to draw many cards. Oh! 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 They're shaking because it's a Mana Crypt foil here. What? <laughs> Lucky. Leave this right away, because this is a gem, baby. Manic this guy's nice. full of luck. He's got a horseshoe up his butt for sure. <laughs> Here we go. Who's Manic stalking? Oil. Says the guy so who Sam's box is the best one so far. So far. So far. Come on, guys. We got a challenge. Let's do well, it. Wasteland Venture well, Tutor and Manic Rip. That's it, right? I mean, nice. What was with the Manic? No, no, no. Uh, what was with the mana crypt, anyways? Dead right shaman. Whoa, sir, hold the breast. Wow. This guy. All right, I can feel I'm gonna. So I have a hard time to beat this now. GTMS foils are a great set, so we can still beat it. We, we can, can do it, guys. Do it. <laughs> Come on. Come on. So oh, finally I get one. Nimble Mungoos. Foil Deathrite Shaman. Oh, oh man. See there that you baby. Go. Yeah. Oh man. That there you go. It's sweet. It's starting, it's starting to wrap, rally up there. It's a small foil, but uh, we always like it for commanders uh, about the growth. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It'll be really good with the old green channel stuff here. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, again, if I uh, Enchantress, for instance. Our Goshen Enchantress and Meza Enchantress. Okay. All the Enchantresses. Yes. But no, not a great pack. <laughs> Happens. Can be always a death, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We need that god pack. Give me that god pack. God pack that has a force of will and a foil force of will. Something like that. I'll settle for that. Uh, you know. Jason, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Oh no, I got a mythic. Oh. It's a world gorgeous dragon. <laughs> wow. Well, exile all my stuff. Oh. Well. <laughs> We're gonna get a lot, a few of those. Yeah, we'll there. just exile the box here. Like. Yeah, just exile the box. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
sheep. Of course it does. Ah, finally another mythic and it's chrome mox. That's a good one. Very good. Ah, and good. the new Face art fire. is very nice, as if you haven't seen it yet. Chrome mox, really nice art. Ooh, maze of it. Maze, nice. And a tooth and claw foil. Hmm. I like how they do a, 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 a foil per pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I this think it was a good idea this is to sweet. do. Yeah. Definitely. Any this type of packs, especially, I think that this calls for a special occasion of some yeah. sort. Yeah, of course. So I think we're all halfway done our box here. Yeah, I'm Below almost more. done. <laughs> I am close to being done as well. I uh, so still have a little bit about so half. A little bit less. Than I'm half. taking my sweet time. Okay, I'll help you. <laughs> oh, here's something for you, a foil squadron hawk. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this baby's coming home. <laughs> this baby is my, my soul sister. Ah, foil brainstorm. By the oh, oh, that's yeah. a sick one. Now, sick. now I recognize you, money grabber. <laughs> Porter. I thought I thought that you were too and quiet. Siege gang commander. A little bit. I don't like the new the Fiction. I love him. He's such a good guy. Braids. Braids is good. Oh. Important calls. I <coughs> this card has an history for me. It's the Prodigal Saucer. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, I had that card and another one, Saucer Apprentice, altered with my own face because oh, it nice. because it was representing me so well. I always love to play those little pinger. Inkwell, but love I I second that. Pingers are the. <laughs> Especially Prodigal Sorcerer with his uh, little French beret. <laughs> <laughs> that little here. drone pinger in uh, that battle was so crazy to play also. Adapting in return, oh my god. Yeah. Oh, young Pyromancer, finally. Okay. So one good point about this set so far is that the foils are not as warped as with the other the previous ones. Yeah. The foiling process is getting better. Yeah. Getting back to better. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because we uh, used to have good foils. Printing has been an issue for quite a while. Uh, they've been getting better though, uh, as we can see in this uh, product. I remember the first time they had issues was what, uh, Avacyn Restored, where all the foils were dark and yes. warping like crazy. Yes. Yes. Oh, it yeah. was like, oh, what's going on here? Dag Faden, my third, oh, yes. my third uh, the so, so far. Dag Faden, Chrome Mox, and Argosian Enchantress are my nice. three mythics so far in this box. And they say it's about. Have three. you been in a, a mythic yet, Mopek? I have a few minutes so far. I have a sneak attack. Oh, yeah, sneak attack. <coughs> I have a couple. Oh. So. Want to make a uh, stack for your rares and a stack for your mythics? No. <laughs> okay. That'll <laughs> well, come after. Martin is having trouble with the short sorting, but he's catching up. He's not used like us to uh, sort all day every day. No, I do all not day all day. Day. He's, got he's got people to do that. <laughs> Ooh, I have another mythic here, Karakas. There we go. Oh, man, this guy is getting all the good stuff. He's getting all the good stuff. So my box would be way over their expected value at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> now seeing as it's all a case, the same case, we're going to get a good view of what happens if you buy four good boxes. Spread, yeah. Um, I tend to prefer always buying uh, at a case at a time because then you can make sure that you get the whole spread. Uh, yeah. Buying by, like let's say three or four boxes out of a case, you may get that underwhelming box, just as you may get that god box, but. Getting every uh, box in a case gives you other chances of getting maximum. You want to even your odds. That's yeah. right. So, 
so far. The yeah, case this is case pretty is nice. Good. This case is good. We're still looking for that force of will. We're still looking for and the Jace. Jace. We'll get there. Yeah, hopefully one of us will grab one. That's it. It's working on it. Nimble Mumboos. Oh, that didn't work. It's getting to the end. Yeah. I'm gonna have to sing a sad song. <laughs> Maze of Ith. Okay. Oh, there's a second one. I love the Maze of Ith when I started playing Magic. Oh, oh the man. Dark was out. That was one of my favorite cards. I remember the first time I got into Commander EDH back then, and like everyone was going crazy over Maze of Ith. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I'm like, yeah, and I finally got one, and I'm like, oh, this is good. But then I'm like, oh, wait. Everything's attacking me. I can only do this once. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing Roar of the Worm in my first time this deck. I went so much crazy about this deck that I even bought the Bazaar Magnet at the time. So, wow. Yeah, the good times. I need to sleep. It's not a huge hey, foil. Real estate's a good investment. But I do like this foil. It's a gas listing foil. It's uh, actually pretty cool. The old favorite of right. uh, Ulta Thrid. Last pack of this box. Oh, whoa. Come on. Good luck. Come on. Let's do it. Let's Will do you it. be the lowest? I'm, I'm going to go I'm gonna go card by card. I'm with you. No, I'm not looking at the back. I'm not looking at the back. Maybe that was my my, my mistake. That's why I didn't get anything good. <laughs> oh, come you on. didn't get anything good? Dead right shaman. Okay, oh, come on. sorry. Rephrase. I didn't get any of the chase. I want to hit at least one. At least one. <laughs> Just to say I did, you know? Yeah. You gotta stay positive though. By no like that. Yeah, case, you're, turning it, you're turning it into This case was abundantly good, so I think we're good here. Well mana crypt for it. I mean Woo! Eight and a half tails. Oh, Natural right. order. Fourth mythic, boys. Wow. I have uh, another squadron hawk for it. Hey, that's cool. <laughs> Makes him so happy. Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> okay, emblem for Dak Faden to go with my Dak Faden. How how thoughtful of them. You guys got a, a sleeve I can grab. Thank you. I really like the other sleeve. Yeah, me too. Really nice. Done well so far. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, always happy to see days. Who needs help? I'm just gonna take one of his packs. That's it, help him out. Help a brother out. Watch, watch this be the crazy force of will pack. This to teach me a lesson. That's right, keep it <laughs> Keep it positive. Gotta be enthusiastic about opening these or else the packs are gonna play against yeah. you. Yeah. Well you can't yeah. be not enthusiastic about cracking. Oh them. hell yeah. <laughs> no no scar. It's fun. Come on. It's fun anyway. That's Either right. Way. Especially Okay. And so this many much. counter spells. Yeah, so many counter spells. So I'm the only one that had his shivers here with the crit foil. The counter <laughs> is real. He's like, hey, death right shaman. This uh, this box is uh, really good. Yeah, you got you got a really good one. Yeah, Sam that's too. probably four mythics. I'm happy. Green sun zenith. Yeah, four green sun zenith is always so good. Played everywhere. Well, where you can. Yeah, oh, so this. Sword. Well, well, yeah, it's true. I got the green sun zenith foil. Huh? I can't forget that one. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, I'm gonna spread it. I'll show you guys. Thinking what I, I need to switch the wings. Guys, the new ones. Uh, we'll get you some more. Um... Hey guys, can you get us some uh, sleeves? Diminishing return. Thank you. There you go. Guys, need all oh, fear sleeves. <laughs> oh, we need some. Uh, Foil sleeves. Sleeves for the foils. Oh man, that's the pack I wanted. Pauper's gonna love it. Killed in Mar Marauder for it. Yeah, no, I got I got one or two of those too. Two packs left is the moment of truth. The last two. Alright. Alright. To the end here. In tomb foil, baby. Wow. wow. With a green sun's and foil. We like it. 
I need those sleeves, please. <laughs> hey, sleeves. guys. Get those sleeves, please. All the way. Thanks, Matt. We've got our dutiful we underlings working delivery. behind the scenes for us. <laughs> the real Where life. would we be without our underlings? <laughs> oh, finally. Jace! Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Finally. You get a clap, man, because I've been with you for so long. <laughs> Working <Chris Moore>. so hard. <laughs> Told you that I felt my box had a Jace in it. Oh, you're right. There you go. Cheers. Nice. Uh, so, I'll take a few right. here, too. We got I'll here. Uh, That's all the rest But, uh, yeah, I got an Intune 4 with a green sub on it for That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. I still got a word a lot, even if it's a reprint about the Anthem foil. Mm. Um, Which one? The Anthem foil. Oh, uh, yeah. Re foil Rares has been so rare because it was Odyssey at the well, time. Do so. you think, you guys think uh, dealers are going to be opening up as many boxes or is it going to be more going to be open to drafts and, and sealed than. Uh, an actual I think it might be a mix, really. I mean, a lot of people are going to do traps and seals of this. This is. But do you actually think that more stores are going to be opening more than a case, let's say? And Dark a, stores. We're opening a case right now, and we're seeing what's going on. Dark City is most, most likely. <laughs> well, I was, I was, I was really talking as a global sale, global? Not, not per, you know. I okay. Mean, obviously, Star City. Obviously, Channel Fireball. You're like, I mean, they're they're probably. <laughs> Probably be given. They're the end cores of the market, so obviously they're gonna. We well, can't the really con compare them to all the other stores, but I mean. Ah, like, yeah. finally, single. Oh yeah. What? Single, no. not regular. No, I would have loved it too much. Bro. You would have heard me scream most for it. Okay. Just to <laughs> get it is already good. Now, now I want him to get it just so we can see his girly scream. <laughs> That's all my girlfriend only. So, no commentaries here. <laughs> you heard it here first. Nice foils on my box here, and I still have one pack left to open. I was saving just my last. I was going to savor it. My last hit of Eternal Masters. In my stock. Yep. Boy, after this, I got the munchies. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, it does whet someone's appetite to open those, right? I know, you okay. get so excited and you're like, oh man. And at the end, all your energy's gone. Now you want to go draft. each one by one, because so I, I want to no, enjoy no, this last pack. You know, I said, Sinkhole was a favorite. Well, Vindicate was another one oh, for me, nice. so... Uh, so, oh, I opened true. the card that I wanted, Sensei's Divining Top. Oh, nice! There you go. From which box? Not his box, obviously. Oh, no, this is his. <laughs> I think that I had uh, quite a good box. Yeah. All right, to finish off, here's the uh, full lot of the case. I would really suggest anybody that wants to get their, more than just their feet wet, to get the whole case, the whole yeah, case, and make sure to ask for the four boxes from the same case. That way you get an even spread. We got the Mana Crypt here, we got Mother of Runes, Green is Sun Zenith and in two months foils, those are the the big oh, death right. And let's not forget Death Right Shaman. Sorry, the reflection. Whoa, Death Right was hiding. But yeah, mythics, as you see here, you got the uh, underwhelming mythics here. Of course, still went also underwhelming, but the uh, the ones right here are quite nice. That's money right here. And uh, as the the Oh, here we go. Forgot about the Jace. Unfortunately, Necro, Necro Prep opens. So, again, grab a case if you can, if you're going to open them up, and then you get to choose which way you're going to go. I think that overall we were uh, pretty good on the value that we opened on, the, on that case. Uh, we do have nice tables, and we ended up with lots of nice uh, rare and uncommons. Uh, <clears throat> there, there is of course a few that comes to mind like Jay's is always nice to see a foil mother of rune is actually really nice but Mana Crypt is the show stealer for that box so uh, it was exact when they said uh, three three packs per uh, three mythics per 
per K a box. We do have 13. We do have 13 uh, mythics, including the uh, the foil uh, the foil mythic. Wonderful, wonderful spread. Uh, I'm really really so, excited here. So to sum it up, uh, we think that it's going to be a great set to open. Uh, you should grab this, and then, like we said earlier, get <clears throat> get your cards. Look at what you can build with it, and run to your LGS and buy the staples you need uh, fast because the prices are going to spike up again. So early buyers will uh, benefit uh, from building their decks early. Um, that's all for me, folks. Uh, it's been really, really fun. Uh, we will do this again some someday with another edition. Uh, Greg, a player, pleasure as always. Anthony, <coughs> thank you yep. for your good work. Uh, thank you to, to open my packs for me because I'm so slow. <laughs> Thanks, Martin, for joining us and everybody else. This is us signing off. 3KL signing off. Have a great day. Enjoy your Eternal Masters drafts. <laughs>